Hello friends, welcome you all to the second video lecture on watermarking. So here we shall try to classify the various watermarking techniques based on its characteristics. So how can we classify them? The first one happens to be blind versus non-blind. So what is blind watermarking technique? In blind watermarking technique, the technique is said to be blind if it does not require access of the original unwatermarked data. So when we talk about the original unwatermarked data, we are talking about the host image or the host data to recover the watermark. So we have the original unwatermarked data, you have the watermark, the watermark is embedded and we get the watermarked image. So therefore, in order to extract the watermark, if the original unwatermarked data is not required, then such a technique is referred to as blind watermarking and this is most widely used. Now when we talk about non-blind technique, so when we talk about a non-blind technique, the original unwatermarked data is required to recover the watermark. So here the original unwatermarked data is not required in blind, but whereas here in non-blind the original unwatermarked data is required to recover the watermark and hence it is more robust. It's very evident because the original data is required and hence this method is more robust. In the next classification we have perceptible. If the embedded watermark, so you have the embedded watermark, if the embedded watermark is visible to the human eye, then we say that such a watermark is perceptible. So a good perceptible watermark must be difficult for any unauthorized person to remove and should be able to resist falsification. Right? So if the watermark is visible, then we say that it is perceptible watermark. And then what is imperceptible? Imperceptible watermark is such that it is invisible to the human eye. And therefore, the process of embedding into the host image is done by sophisticated algorithms. So the watermark is actually embedded into the host image such that the watermarked image and the unwatermarked image look similar or look almost the same to the human eye. So therefore, in order to embed the watermark into the unwatermarked image, sophisticated algorithms are used and such a technique is referred to as imperceptible watermarking. So the next classification is private watermarks and public watermarks. A watermark is said to be private if only authorized users can detect it. Right? So therefore, these techniques are such that so private watermarking techniques are such that it is almost impossible for unauthorized users to extract the watermark and hence they are more robust. So here they can only be detected by authorized users and they are more robust. So public watermarking techniques are such that anyone can read the watermark and hence they are called as public. So public watermarks are embedded in such a location such that it is known to everybody. So these watermarks are such that the watermark is easily detectable by any software and hence such techniques are referred to or such watermarks are referred to as public watermarks. The fourth one based on the robustness. The watermarks are actually designed such that they survive any intentional or unintentional modifications of the watermark image. So here there may be modifications and they can be intentional. So if it is intentional, intentional then it is malicious or they can be unintentional so they can be non-malicious. So intentional modifications include unauthorized removal or alternations of the embedded watermark and unauthorized embedding of any other such information into the watermarked image. So what about unintentional modifications? So unintentional modifications may be scaling, cropping, filtering, you may have compression, etc. So robust watermarks are actually used for copyright protection. They are actually used for copyright protection and to declare the rightful ownership. So if you have robust watermarking techniques, we also have watermarking techniques which are in between robust and fragile. So you have semi-fragile 
and fragile. So what are semi-fragile? Semi-fragile watermarks are designed to detect any unauthorized modifications. So they can detect unauthorized modifications and that is done by using some image processing operations. So they also can be used for selective authentication that detects illegitimate distortion and thereby allow, allowing legitimate distortions. So now let's talk about fragile. So what are fragile watermarks? Fragile watermarks are used to detect any unauthorized modifications of course and the slightest modification of the watermark image will alter and may destroy the fragile watermark. So any modifications done to fragile watermarks will lead to destroying the fragile watermark or will alter the fragile watermark. So these are some of the classifications based on the characteristics. So we have blind, non-blind, a recap, a blind watermark where the technique does not require the original unwatermark data to recover the watermark which is more widely used and then we have a non-blind technique which is more robust perceptible, imperceptible where the watermark is visible and here it is invisible we have private and public so in private only authorized users are capable of identifying and detecting the watermark and is more robust Whereas in public, anybody can identify the watermark and then you have a watermarking technique which is robust and of course you have semi-fragile and fragile which are usually used to detect unauthorized modifications. Mm -hmm. Now in case of fragile, if there are any unauthorized modifications, they will surely alter or destroy the watermark. So these are some of the classifications of watermarking based on their characteristics. So I hope you found the video informative. So do not forget to like, share and subscribe and press the bell icon to get notifications of all the further uploads and keep a watch for the next set of videos where we will discuss the various techniques of watermarking. So do not forget to click on the eye icon to view all the other videos on cryptography and network security or check out the playlist cryptography and network security and thanks for watching.